Hey guys, this is Karan. I live in Saudi Arabia studying 9th grade in Yamu International School. I have done a lot of tutorials on physics, pre-calculus, mental math, and you can watch them for absolutely no cost of money at www.youtube.com slash m-o-d-i-k-a-r-a-n. Okay, now let's go back to our topics. Today our topic is rotational equilibrium. So let's start off with explaining the keywords rotational. Well, we already talked about rotational. It basically means circular. Okay, so now equilibrium. And this is the word when people hear this word, they have no idea what equilibrium is. So let me tell you guys, regular equilibrium is basically when you have x component and y component when they add x and y component they become zero okay so we can write this as total force in x component plus total force in y component adds up to zero okay now that would mean that there is no rotation and no no the object is not moving okay so when the net force of x component and when the net force of y component adds up to zero there's basically no movement nor rotation now now let's let me express this in words okay now you have total force in x component that becomes zero total force in y component adds up to zero so this two basically means no movement or we can say no translation okay now here comes the thing that most of the people get shocked okay now torque torque is zero as well torque basically tells us that if the object is not moving since the net force of the torque is zero okay so this basically tells us it's not rotating okay so when you have net force in x, di x direction and y direction the, the object is not moving but when you have the net force of torque to be zero it's not rotating as well so you have total equilibrium that means, okay, that means that the equilibrium, when an object is in equilibrium, it's constant, it's conserved, it's not moving at all, okay? Now, I would advise you to look at this and figure out what I will be talking about, okay? Now, when an object is rotating clockwise, like this, okay, clockwise, it has a positive torque, okay? When it's rotating counterclockwise, it has a torque which is negative okay that means when uh, when it's moving in counterclockwise position it's it has a torque of negative and when it's moving in clockwise position it has a positive torque okay now let's move on to our examples okay Okay, like you guys can see the cushion. It's a, it's a lady is standing on a stage that is hung from two cranes, one on each end. The stage weighs 1000 newton and is 10 meter long. What is the tension of the ropes when the 400 newton kid stands from one meter from the end? Okay, now let's draw the diagram of what the cushion is trying to tell us. So there is basically crane, okay. Okay, this is hung by crane over here, and this is basically hung by crane. And this is a stage which says that it's 10 meter long. Okay, now it says the stage weighs 1000 newton, so it becomes down, it's putting the pressure downwards, right? So it's 1000 newton. Okay, now it also says that a kid is standing on it. 
So there is more 400 Newton. Okay, and this is kid. When kid stands on it, and he's standing from one meter apart. So this is basically one meter over here. Okay. Now we need to find the tension. So let's just say this is the this is being pulled up by a crane. So crane A and crane B. Okay. Now this is what we want it to be in total equilibrium. So we know that when we add x and y component, it should be adding up to zero. Okay. So we can express that idea in the words like total force in y direction is equal to zero okay and total force in x direction is equal to zero now in y direction we have ca and cb okay now in x direction which is over here we have it to be thousand newtons and four hundred newtons so how do we do this so we have uh, ca okay ca over here plus because we are adding the y directions first and then we have cb because okay ca and what we are doing is subtracting it by 400 newtons over here okay then we are subtracting it by 1000 newtons because that's how much the stage weights and we get the total to be zero okay now if we were to add this to and put this over here okay we would get CA the CB is equal to 1400 newtons okay now we do know when they add up it equals this much amount of force but we all we need to find is tension on each force so we basically need to find to how much force does this exert and how much force this exert it's not divided by two because this is not really having same amount of force being to pull up to each other so let's take this idea and keep it apart since we already found the 1400 newton the total force the total tension now it also happens that it's not rotating right so the total force in torque should equal to zero as well right now remember we just take a pivot point okay now if you were to uh, rotate an object at the very pivot point it wouldn't it wouldn't have any torque right so let's take a pivot point which is right here so it actually has no distance okay since that it has no distance so we can put this idea ca times zero okay so the force times zero okay and we add f or 400 times one because 400 is the k uh, newton of the cat okay and what he's standing one meter apart because it's one meter apart okay and then we add 1000 newton but remember the the problem here is we don't add 10 meter we divide that number in half because really 10 newton uh, 1000 newton is acting in the middle not everywhere else so what's half of 10 it's basically 5 okay and we it's going in clockwise motion okay that is the reason why we add over here and here what happens is we subtract now okay we subtract it by CB because it's going in counterclockwise motion and we subtract it by total distance of the stage which is basically 10 okay and this all should equal to zero because it's in equilibrium okay now if you were to do all this okay you would be getting uh, this just goes out to be zero because any number multiplied by zero is zero basically and then we have 400, 400 newton plus 5,000 Newton okay and we take this and put it over here so we can tell that this is 10 CB okay now we add this number 
Okay, when we add this number, we get our number to be 5,400 Newton, okay, is equal to 10 CB. Now what we do is divide by 10 on both sides, okay, now 0, 0 cancels out, 10, 10 cancels out. So what we found out is 54 Newton, okay, fi 540 Newton is equal to CB. Okay, now knowing this idea, let's get back to this idea over here. Okay, since we found out the tension on crane, which is the second crane, that is the reason why we call CB. Okay, this is crane B over here. Now we found out the tension on crane B and we have the total pressure. What we need to do is basically write down our idea what we have. So I'm just going to erase this up. So now we have our two important ideas that we found out by solving equations. Okay, now well, what we need to do is plug CB, this value, into CB. So CA is what we need to find, okay, plus 540 newtons is equal to 1400 newtons. Okay, now if you do that, you subtract 540 newtons on both sides. Okay, you would find your answer of CA to be 860 newtons. Okay, now let's talk about what we did. Okay, what we did is drew the diagram first to understand the concept. Okay, so you have to draw the concept, write down what we already know. Like we know that the force in x, the net force in x direction and the net force in y direction should always be equal to zero. Okay, now what we did is this is the y direction and this is the x direction over here. That is the reason why we put first the y direction and then we add them, okay, and is equal to zero because the to sum of x and y direction okay, should always add up to zero since it's rotational equilibrium, okay. Now, since it's rotating over here in clockwise motion till uh, 5 meters long, okay, we, we added this, okay, we added it. We didn't subtract it, we added it. So, well, we, we then used, we found out the total tension that has been acting on this crane that is pulling the stage up so people can stand on this stage. Now what happens is Kit comes over here and he's standing one meter apart from this pivot point. So that is the reason why we need to choose a pivot point. So after we chose a pivot point, there is basically no distance. So it's like pushing, um, pushing or applying a force on a wrench at very pivot point. So you would have no torque, okay? So it's very difficult to move a wrench with its pivot point right there. Okay, now since there is a pivot point on that uh, edge, what happens is we have no distance. Since we have no distance, we can say zero distance. When a number is multiplied by zero, it uh, the outcome is always zero. So we add, we then add 400 and 400, which is the Newton on the kit, and he's standing that much of a meter apart, which is one meter apart right here, and then we add thousand newton, but the thousand newton doesn't act on every part of the straight. It acts in the middle. That is why the arrow is pointing in the middle. Now, 10 divided by 2 is what we do to find the middle, okay? Now, 10 divided by 2, we, we found it to be 5. So we take thousand multiplied by 5 because thousand newton is acting from the pivot point which is five meter apart okay now what we subtract CB okay and we subtract it by the total length which is 10 why do we do that well because it's moving in counterclockwise okay that is the reason I had the diagram over here showing you that clockwise motion becomes positive and clock counterclockwise motion becomes pos uh, negative Okay, so since it's moving in counterclockwise motion, we have CB to be zero, uh, negative. 
Okay, now when you add that and put CB over here, we have 10 CB, we had 10 CB, and we had the total outcome to be 5,400. Okay, when you divide 5,400 by 10, you would get your answer in CB, which is the crane B, the tension in the crane B is 540 newtons. So you go back to this equation that you found out that CA plus CB is equal to 1,400 newtons. So when you have when you have the value for CB, you can totally easily find the value of CA by using this matter over here, which is CA plus 540 newtons, switch the values for CB is equal to this much amount, and when you subtract on both sides by 540 newtons, you would get your answer to be 860 newtons. So the force that is acting on us, crane A, is equal to 860 newtons. The force that is acting on Crane B is equal to 540 newtons, okay? Now, like I told you before, it doesn't have to be equal because since it's pulling, it can be different as well. Like in this case, this, is, this has much um, greater amount of force than Crane B, okay? So Crane A is applying more force to the stage to hold the, to hold the stage up then crane B is. So I hope you like this video. Okay.